Hi, this is Mary Ellen Schneider reporting from the American Society of Clinical Oncology annual meeting in Chicago. I'm joined today by Dr. Remy Nelt of Leiden University in the Netherlands. He has just presented a very interesting study um, looking at vaginal brachytherapy, which he found to be as effective as external beam radiation therapy in preventing recurrence among high-risk endometrial cancer patients. Thank you for joining us. I was hoping you would talk about why vaginal brachytherapy is such an attractive option. Okay, great question. Um, I have to correct you up front because sure. you mentioned that it was high-risk patients and uh, this is a bit complicated in, uh, in, in immature cancer, but we are looking at high intermediate risk patients. And um, we recognized three groups, low-risk patients, uh, which uh, their recommendation is no uh, adjuvant treatment because their uh, uh, radiation therapy does not improve local regional recurrence. Um, or a local regional control, and uh, we are focusing on the high intermediate risk patient population. And uh, your question again was the... Um, given, given that you found that there's such um, a much more attractive side effect profile with yeah. vaginal brachytherapy, is that really the better treatment option compared to um, external beam radiation? Um, so uh, we were able to establish with this trial that uh, vaginal brachytherapy is very uh, effective in preventing vaginal recurrences and what we knew from our first PORTEC trial that randomized between external beam radiotherapy and no additional therapy, uh, we learned that patients with these high, ri high intermediate risk features uh, have approximately 20% risk of developing uh, local regional recurrence if you don't add any radiation therapy. And with external beam radiotherapy, we were able to reduce this to about 5%. And now we can see that um, uh, with vaginal brachytherapy, uh, the local regional recurrence rate is approximately 4%, and, um, uh, and it is very effective in preventing um, uh, vaginal recurrences, which account for approximately 75% of the uh, recurrences. So that's why vaginal brachytherapy is a very uh, interesting um, uh, therapy option in this patient population. Um, regarding the quality of life and toxicity, um, uh, we already knew that external beam radiotherapy was associated with uh, mild gastrointestinal um, uh, side effects and uh, we were able to see with patient health-related quality of life questionnaire uh, information that um, uh, vaginal brachytherapy uh, was associated, or let me put it the other way around, external beam radiotherapy um, was associated with a high increase uh, after radiotherapy of uh, diarrhea symptoms, and we were able to see that these, this increase in diarrhea symptoms uh, also reflected on patients' daily activities. So the, the patients daily activities were limited by their bowel problems and as a consequence social functioning was also lower in patients treated with external beam radiotherapy. So now we, uh, besides uh, physician um, uh, score toxicity, we also have um, uh, patient health related uh, uh, outcomes that um, show that vaginal brachytherapy is associated with less toxicity and a better quality of life. So given uh, that the treatments are approximately uh, as effective um, or very comparable, um, uh, we uh, pose that we should go for the treatment that has the less side effects and the best quality of life, which is, in this case, vaginal brachytherapy. Great. Um, I knew one of the secondary outcomes for the study um, looked at survival. What did you find there, um, both with vaginal brachytherapy and with the um, external beam radiation? So we found there were no significant differences between both treatment uh, arms, and this is uh, also actually what we expected, mm -hmm. um, because uh, um, a survival is uh, more related to uh, distant metastasis, and there was no significant difference between both treatment arms in relation to distant, metast distant metastasis. And in both treatment groups, approximately half of the patients that died uh, were endometrial cancer-related deaths, and approximately ha half were inter intercurrent uh, deaths. So there was no significant difference, and the three-year rates of disease-free and overall survival were approximately 90 percent, and that's really what you would expect in this patient population. Great. Um, I know you've done PORTEC-1, now PORTEC-2, and you're yeah. rolling for PORTEC-3. What exactly. are you looking for in that 
study? So uh, PORTEC-3 aims for high-risk patients and um, the question uh, that we ask in PORTEC-3 is uh, if um, uh, chemotherapy um, uh, adds uh, to um, the uh, survival and uh, um, other endpoints in this patient group. So um, uh, we are uh, testing a regimen of concurrent chemotherapy and adjuvant chemotherapy uh, compared to uh, only uh, radiation therapy. Great. And when can we expect to see some results from PORTEC-3? We hope so, really. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank this you. This has been Mary Ellen Schneider from Oncology Stat at the American Society of Clinical Oncology.